Hello students. Today we'll discuss about the muscles which are present in the intercostal spaces. So when you will learn this heading intercostal muscles, there are three muscles. Now what are these three muscles? When you will go from outside to inside, when you will remove the skin, when you will remove the deep fascia, you will have the areas where you have the three muscles. And these muscles are known as intercostal because these are present in the space between the adjacent ribs. Clear? So, this is your one rib, this is your another rib. Now, the space between the two adjacent ribs are known as intercostal spaces. And how many spaces are there? You know that on one side you will have 12 rib. So, on one side you will have 11 spaces. Clear? So, in these spaces we will find the three sets of the muscle from outside to inside. Outermost is known as external intercostal. Middle one is known as internal intercostal. And innermost layer of the muscle is known as innermost intercostal muscle or it is also known as transverse thoracis. And there is one more part of this is subcostalis. So, when we will see this third layer which is the innermost layer, we will see that this is not a single muscle, it is a combination of three muscles. Clear? So, what are the intercostal muscles? Intercostal muscles are the muscles which are present in a space between the adjacent ribs. We are having the 11 spaces and there are three sets of the muscle from outside to inside, external intercostal, internal intercostal and innermost intercostal. So, my dear students, here you can see that this is one rib. Now in this rib you can see there are two parts. This is the costal cartilage of the rib and this is the bony part of the rib. In the same way this is the another rib. So in between the two ribs this is your intercostal space. Now in this space here you can see that there is a one muscle which is visible outer side and this outermost visible muscle is your external intercostal. So let's see in this video clip that when you will go layer by layer deep from outside, first you can see that this is an external intercostal muscle. When you will remove the external intercostal muscle, you will find a layer deep to that. Now this layer is internal intercostal. Now on both the side you have the internal intercostals. If you will remove the internal intercostal, you will find innermost intercostal. So innermost intercostal is a third layer or the deepest layer and here you can see that this is the innermost intercostal and this inner, innermost intercostal is not occupying the whole length of your intercostal space. This is not present anteriorly and anteriorly you will have some part of innermost intercostal which is known as transverse thoracis and you can see it is retrosternally, it is present behind this sternum and you can see these oblique fibers and these oblique fibers are transversely placed fibers of the muscle which is innermost. Clear? So what are the three layer? Outermost is external intercostal, then you will have internal intercostal, then you will have innermost intercostal. But innermost intercostal is not present in the whole length of your intercostal space. Now, if you will see the two more terms we will have anterior and posterior intercostal membranes. So you know that these are the intercostal spaces where you will have the muscle. Now here you can see this is the outermost muscle is external intercostal and this external intercostal is showing this area which is membranous anteriorly. But when you will go into the chest cavity and if you will see posteriorly, posteriorly also you will have this membranous area. So anteriorly this membrane is anterior membrane and this is a posterior membrane. Now this anterior intercostal membrane is a part of external intercostal muscle while this posterior intercostal membrane is a part of internal intercostal which is a middle layer of your intercostal space. Clear? So whenever you are dealing with the spaces, we are having the two membranes in the space anteriorly anterior membrane, posteriorly posterior membrane but anterior membrane is a part of external intercostal while posterior membrane is a part of internal intercostal which is a middle layer. Clear? Now 
we will learn these three muscle one by one. First is external intercostal muscle. So, when you will see the external intercostal, as I already told you that it is the outermost layer of your intercostal space and they are present in the 11 spaces because you have the 11 intercostal spaces. So, how many numbers? 11 on this side, 11 on this side. So, they are total 22 in number. Now, when you will see the extension of this muscle, I just told you that anteriorly you will have anterior intercostal membrane which is a part of external intercostal. That means, when you will see this intercostal space in whole length, what you are able to understand that there is a junction between the membrane and the muscle fiber. So, this is the membranous area and this is your muscle area. So, this muscle is not extending in the whole length till you have a sternum anteriorly. So, what is the extension? You have to understand that it extends from tubercle of rib posteriorly to the costochondral junction anteriorly. So, where is the junction? Now, here you can see that this is your junction. Now, this is your junction between the cartilage and the rib and this junction is known as costochondral junction. So, costo means rib, chondro means cartilage. So, what is the meaning? Costochondral junction and you can see that these fibers are present till this costochondral junction. So, anteriorly it starts from the costochondral junction. What is present in front of the costochondral junction? The muscle fibers are not present rather than you will have a membrane which is known as anterior intercostal membrane. Now, posteriorly it extends till the tubercle of the rib. Now, see when you will have the posterior view of your chest wall, you can see here that it is the your vertebral column which is showing your thoracic vertebrae. And we know that thoracic vertebrae are having the transverse processes. So, these are the transverse processes. Now, these transverse processes having the costal facets anteriorly to articulate with the rib and this area is known as tubercle of your rib. So, these are the tubercles of the rib. Clear? So, posteriorly if you will see the extension of your external intercostal, you will find that it is almost at the level of these tubercles of your ribs. Clear? So, what is the extension of the external intercostal? Anteriorly up to the costochondral junction and posteriorly it will start from this tubercle of your rib. Clear? Now, we will see this area. If you will see this video clip, what you are able to understand that this is a typical rib and this is a your thoracic vertebrae. And these junctions are there between the transverse process and your tubercle. Clear? So, we are talking about this part of your muscle which is starts from the tubercle and this tubercle is a area which is making a joint with the uh, facet present on the transverse process of your thoracic vertebrae. Clear? So, now we will see anterior intercostal membrane, I told you it is a anterior that means it lies in the anterior chest wall and this is present between the costochondral junction and the sternum. So, that is why we are able to understand this thing that this external layer of the muscle does not extend till this border of your sternum. Clear? So, there is a presence of the membrane and this membranous area which is known as anterior intercostal membrane is uh, able to uh, connect this remaining muscle to the sternum. Clear? So, this anterior gap between the muscle fiber and the sternum filled by this membrane which is known as anterior intercostal membrane or it is also known as external intercostal membrane. Now, posteriorly I told you that this muscle arises or is going till the tubercle, but what will happen that free posterior border? That free posterior border of the muscle is going to merge with a ligament which is known as superior costo transverse ligament. So, that you can appreciate in this image that where is the superior costo transverse ligament. Now, here you can see these green color bands. Now, these bands are superior 
costo transverse ligament and these ligaments are having attachment of this posterior free border of your external intercostal muscle clear so now you are able to understand that external intercostal muscle is the outermost layer and this muscle is having the placement where you will see that anteriorly it is not there and anteriorly from costochondral junction to the sternum it is replaced by the membrane and posteriorly this posterior free border of the muscle merge with the ligament is known as superior costo transverse ligament now let's see its origin insertion and the direction of fiber now when you will see the intercostal space they are actually the muscle attached between the adjacent ribs now the origin of the external intercostal comes from the lower border of the rib above the space what does it mean now suppose you are having the two ribs here now if you will cut it and see what you are able to understand that there are this is the upper rib and this is the lower rib clear now why i am drawing this section because you have to keep this thing in mind that there is a costal groove is present on the medial side of the rib so this is a costal groove on the two ribs on the medial surface clear now when we are talking about the origin of this external intercostal muscle it arises from lower border of the rib which is in the upper part of the intercostal space so it arises from this lower border of the rib which is in the upper part of the space clear and where is the insertion it insert on the outer lip of the rib which is the lower rib of the intercostal space so this is the outer lip of this rib which is lower to this space so the muscle fibers will attach here clear so when you will see the external intercostal muscle it arises from the rib but which rib which is upper rib of the space lower border and where it insert it insert in the lower rib of the space but on the upper border and outer lip so this is the one thing now second thing is the direction of the fibers now here you can see what is the direction of the fibers now if you will see the direction of the fibers the fibers are going downward and forward and medially what is that downward forward and medially now if you will see this direction the direction is just like similar very similar to how you uh, place your hand in your pockets when you will place your hand in your pockets your hand is going downward forward and medially so in the same way when you are uh, putting your hands in your pockets the external intercostal muscle fibers is downward forward and medially clear now what is the innervation the muscles of the intercostal space supplied by the respective intercostal nerves and their branches now what is the action now when you are seeing the action you know that this is the origin which is from the upper rib this is the insertion which is on the lower rib so this origin pulls this insertion so what will happen that this is the direction of the pull so when this will be the direction of the pull it is actually lifting the lower rib so the there is a elevation of the ribs is seen and this is possible when you are doing the inspiration so when we need the inspiration what is happening the volume of the cavity is increasing so your chest is expansion is there so this chest expansion is possible because elevation of the ribs are there and because of this elevation that means there is a pull by the external intercostal and it is helpful in the inspiration clear now we'll move to the next muscle is known as internal intercostal muscle now this internal intercostal muscle as i already told you it is a second layer or you can say it is a middle layer because deep to that that you have a third layer also now again when you will see the number you have the 11 intercostal spaces so again these are the total 22 number on both right and left side now what is the extension of this internal intercostal when you will see the extension of internal intercostal it starts very initially from the sternum so anteriorly it starts from the lateral border of the sternum and posteriorly it will reach to the angle of rib now where is the angle of rib now this is the posterior view 
and this is your angle of the rib. Now posteriorly you can see in a typical rib you will find a banding and that band starts from the angle and up to this angle your fibers of the internal intercostal will end and from this angle to this ligament you will have a membrane which is known as posterior intercostal membrane clear so dear students what is the difference between the extension of external intercostal and internal intercostal external intercostal anteriorly starts from the costochondral junction while internal intercostal starts from the lateral border of the sternum posteriorly the external intercostal reaches up to the superior costotransverse ligament while the internal intercostal muscle is reaches only up to the angle of rib posteriorly anteriorly the external intercostal is having the membrane posteriorly the internal intercostal is having the membrane clear so now here you can see the extension of internal intercostal that it starts very early from this border now this is the external intercostal you can see the direction of fibers and this is the direction of fiber of internal intercostal so the muscle fibers are right angle to each other second thing is you have seen that internal intercostal starts just from the lateral border of the sternum and when you will see posteriorly this is the angle and it its muscular fibers and near the angle and behind the angle you will have the membrane clear so this is the important uh, difference between the extension of external and internal intercostal so what is posterior intercostal membrane so i just told you that behind the angle of the rib the intercostal muscle become membranous or continue with a very uh, membranous sheet of your intercostal area that is known as posterior intercostal membrane so here you can see that this is the angle and at this junction this yellow color area representing the membrane and ultimately posteriorly this membrane also merge or continue with the superior costotransverse ligament so here this is a costotransverse ligament so this costotransverse ligament posteriorly limits two thing one the vertical or the posterior free border of external intercostal and second is the this posterior free border of your posterior or internal intercostal membrane clear so this ligament merge with the two structure what are these two structure muscle and deep to that membrane now what is the origin insertion nerve supply action of this internal intercostal so origin arises from the floor of the costal groove now see this is a very commonly asked question in your exam as i already told you when you are having any typical rib now in this typical rib on the medial side you will have a depression and this depression is known as costal groove and this costal groove is having a margin in here this margin is known as ridge of the costal groove this is the inferior border of the rib so from this inferior border of the rib up to the ridge this area is known as costal groove now from the floor of this costal groove you are having the origin of your fibers of internal intercostal muscle so from where internal intercostal arises no doubt the answer is rib but which part of the rib answer is floor of this costal groove which is present on the medial surface of rib now what is the insertion now inner lip of the upper border of the rib below the intercostal space clear so in this space in the lower part you will have one more rib now this upper border is having the outer lip and the inner lip now this outer border or the outer lip of the upper border is receiving the external intercostal while this inner lip of the upper border is receiving the insertion of internal intercostal now what is the direction now see the direction of the internal intercostal is very important because the direction of the fibers of internal intercostal is right angle to the fiber of external intercostal so what was the direction of external intercostal it is downward and medially so what is the direction of internal intercostal it is just right angle now in this image what you are able to understand here that this is showing the medial surface of your rib 
Now on this medial surface of the rib, you can see this is the ridge. And below the ridge, this is your costal groove. And this is your lower border of your rib. So from this lower border to the ridge on the medial side, you are able to see these grooves and these grooves are known as costal grooves and these costal grooves give rise to the origin of internal intercostal muscle. So what is the innervation? Again, it is supplied by the branches of intercostal nerves and what is the action? Action is reverse. The external intercostal lift while the internal intercostal depresses the ribs. So it depresses and retracts the rib during expiration. Why? Because the direction is just right angle to the direction of your external intercostal. So the direction of the internal intercostal and the external intercostal is right angle to each other, which you always keep in mind whenever you are reading these muscles. Now I'll move to the third layer, which is the innermost muscle. And this innermost muscle is known as innermost intercostal muscle. Now there are two thoughts about this muscle. Some book says that these are the three separate muscles. One is known as intercostalis intimus. One is known as intercostalis intimus or innermost intercostal. Second is known as transversus thoracis or sternocostalis. And third is known as subcostalis. So some book says that there are three muscles, intercostalis intimus, transversus thoracis and subcostalis. But some author says that there are no difference, they, these are not the three dif different parts, but it is a single layer of the muscle. So some will say that these are not separate muscles. So some says these are the separate muscles, some says these are not separate muscles. But at the end, you have to understand that innermost layer is having the three component. What are the three component? Intercostalis intimus, then transversus thoracis and subcostalis. Now when you will see, these one by one, for first is intercostalis intimus. What you will find in the initial part of this lecture, I already told you that the innermost layer is not extend in the whole length or the throughout the length of your intercostal space. So here also you can see that when you remove the external intercostal and internal intercostal, you are able to see that this space is not having the innermost layer. So this is the muscle layer which is visible only in the middle part of your intercostal space. So this is the most consistent finding and it is known as innermost layer or intercostalis intimus. Now these are again 11 pairs and I just told you that they occupy only the middle to fourth of your intercostal space. This is not having any membrane the anterior border and posterior borders are free. When you see the origin, they arises from the ridge. I just explain you that when you will go on the inner side of your rib, you will have the costal groove and this costal groove is having a prominent ridge and below the ridge, you will have the costal groove. So from this ridge, what which muscle arises? Answer is intercostalis intimus. So this question has been asked so many times that which muscle arises from the ridge of the costal groove, which muscle arises from the floor of the costal groove. Then when we will talk about the insertion, this muscle follows the second layer that means internal intercostal. So the direction of fibers is similar and the placement of the insertion that means on the upper border but inner lip. So it also insert on the inner surface of the rib below the intercostal space along with the internal intercostal, clear? So the direction is also similar. That means it is again right angle to the fibers of external intercostal. So when you are having the intercostalis intimus, there are two important things which you have to keep in mind that this is not having any membrane anteriorly and posteriorly. That means anterior and posterior borders of this muscle is free. Second thing is that it is present in the middle two fourth and it arises from the ridge of the costal groove from the medial surface, clear? Now what is the nerve supply? Again it is supplied by the branches of intercostal nerve and what is the action? 
action is very similar to the internal intercostal. So along with the internal intercostal, it also helpful in the depression of the ribs. Now innermost intercostal muscle is sometimes absent in the upper two or three spaces and this muscle internally separated from a fascia is known as endothoracic fascia. Because when you are doing the layer by layer dissection, so what layer you will see, first you will remove the skin, then you will remove the superficial and deep fascia, deep to that you will have external intercostal, then you will have internal intercostal, then you will have innermost intercostal. Now deep to that you have the pleural cavity, so you will have the pleura and deep to the pleura you will have the lung. But between the pleura and the innermost intercostal, you have one more layer of the fascia which is known as endothoracic fascia. So once you will remove this innermost intercostal or intercostalis intimus, you will find a endothoracic fascia and deep to the endothoracic fascia you have the pleural cavity. So there is a very important question which has been asked so many times that when we are talking about the intercostal nerves and vessels, they run in between which muscles? You now having the three muscles, external intercostal, internal intercostal and innermost intercostal. So this space between the inner two muscles is having a gap which is known as neurovascular plane. So this question is very commonly asked in your exam that neurovascular bundle of the chest wall or intercostal space runs between which two muscles? So answer is it runs between the internal intercostal and intercostalis intimi. Now here in this image you can see that this is your innermost intercostal or you can say intercostalis intimus. Now this muscle layer is your internal intercostal and between them here you will find a nerve and this is your intercostal nerve. So intercostal nerve lies between which two muscle? Intercostalis intimi and internal intercostal because external intercostal comes here. So this is external intercostal, this is your internal intercostal, this is your innermost intercostal and between these two you are having the intercostal nerves and vessels. So in this video clip also I will try to explain you that this is your, you can see these terminal ends of your intercostal nerves. So these nerves are coming out after piercing this anterior external uh, intercostal membrane. So suppose if you will remove these uh, external intercostal muscles, what you will find? Deep to that I told you you will have the second layer that is internal intercostal. Now this is the internal intercostal. Still you can see that these nerves are coming after piercing this muscle. But the nerve is not visible. Now if you will remove the second layer, now the whole nerve course is visible. You can see again if you will remove, you will find the nerve and deep to this nerve you are having the third layer which is the innermost intercostal or intercostalis intimi. So here this is very clear to you that when we are talking about the neurovascular plane, the neurovascular plane is lies between the inner two muscles which are the innermost intercostal and internal intercostal. Clear? So dear students, whenever you are reading the ex uh, external, internal and innermost intercostal muscles, these are few questions which you always have in your mind. Now we will move to the next part of the innermost layer, this is transversus thoracis. Now this transversus thoracis is also known as sternocostalis because it is a connection between the sternum and the adjacent costal cartilages. So it lies retroesternally, that means just behind the sternum. Now here you can see that just behind the sternum, you can see these obliquely placed your some slips and these are your transversus thoracis or sternocostalis fibers. So they are radiating slips. What is the characteristic? That these are four to five radiating slips. They arises from the posterior surface from where? Lower third of the sternum, not from the upper part, from the lower part of the sternum, from inner side, from the xiphoid process and adjacent part of the costal cartilages. So this is the area from where they are radiating from all your 
adjacent parts and they insert on second to sixth costal cartilages. So they are connection between the sternum and the costal cartilages. That's why they are known as sternocostalis muscle. So what is the direction? They are radiating. So they are diverged upward and laterally. What is the innervation? Again, the intercostal nerves. And what is the action? That they will pull these costal cartilages towards the sternum. That means they are pulling the cartilages in the downward direction. Now you will have a one more component is subcostalis. Now subcostalis component is highly variable and the subcostalis lies in the same plane of the innermost intercostal muscle. The subcostalis is well developed only in the lower part of the thorax. It arises from the inner surface of the rib near its angle. Now where is the angle? Angle is a feature of posterior side. I told you the angle is a feature of posterior part of the rib. So subcostalis is not present in the anterior aspect of intercostal spaces. Subcostal is always present in the posterior aspect of the intercostal spaces and they arises from the inner surface of rib near the angle. They insert at the inner surfaces but they are not attached to the adjacent rib. They are little bit longer muscle slips so they occupy 2-3 intercostal spaces. So once they arise from this angle, they will not insert here, but they will go and insert after 2-3 ribs. Clear? So these are the slips which are present in the posterior aspect of your intercostal space and these are highly variable. These arise from the inner side of the rib near the angle and for the insertion they crosses, crosses 2 or 3 intercostal spaces and the direction is similar to the innermost muscle layer and they supplied by the intercostal nerves. Clear? So when we are reading the innermost layer, the innermost layer is made up of three component. One is the intercostalis intimus, second is transversus thoracis and third is subcostalis. The second important thing is that these muscles are present in the three different parts. The anteriorly you will have transversus thoracis which is retrosternally. In the middle two fourth, you will have innermost intercostal or intercostal is intimus and posteriorly you will have subcostalis. Out of these three components, these subcostalis components are highly variable and the important thing is that the innermost intercostalis or intercostalis intimus arises from the rib, uh, ridge, arises from the ridge of your uh, inner medial side of your adjacent ribs. Clear? So now at the end of this session, we are able to understand that when we are reading the muscles of your intercostal space, there are three muscles from outside, external intercostal, internal intercostal, innermost intercostal. External intercostal is having the anterior membrane while internal intercostal is having posterior membrane and the neurovascular plane is present between the innermost intercostal and internal intercostal. So this is all for the session. Thank you.